Uh, hello and welcome to episode 1 of my Ursina Engine tutorial series. In order to run Ursina Engine, you will need Python 3 specifically, a text editor or code editor of some kind, and the Ursina Engine itself. I'm going to assume that you know how to install these or that you can find a way to install them yourself, and will not go over how to install them in this video series. If you really need me to, I suppose I can go over it for you in a later episode, but for now, I'm just going to assume that you find one of the thousand other videos for installing any one of those three things. So, in this episode, what we aim to do is get a red cube onto the screen and spinning. The first step in any Ursina project, once you have everything installed, is to type in this. From Ursina, import asterisk. Now, what this does is it tells the file that you're making, hey, you know that Ursina engine we've downloaded? Take the libraries from there, take all the stuff from that engine, and import it into this file so that when we use the engine it actually works. That's why you need it at the beginning of every single file that uses the Ursina engine. There are many other things in Python that work this way, but this is the one you need for Ursina specifically. After that, app equals update open and close parentheses. This is admittedly, oh, Ursina, my bad, app equals Ursina, open and close parentheses. This is admittedly just to make, uh, it's a quality of life change, basically. Instead of having to type in every time Ursina.run, you can just type in app.run, and it does the same thing. Basically, it's saying to, to actually use the uh, it's saying just to use the libraries this way. Use the engine, basically. That's, that's not the most important part. That's just a quality of life change, like I said. So, now we get on to the thing you wanted to come here for. Actually drawing and rotating the cube. So first we have to make the cube. And how do we do that? Well, red cube equals entity. Open and close parentheses. Now we've made the red cube, but it doesn't know that it's a red cube yet. It just knows that it's an entity, which is basically, think of it like a, an actor in Unity or Unreal Engine or a node in Godot, if you know that. Basically, it's just a group of attributes that make up a thing. And now to actually draw the cube, you can make your own models, but it also comes with a bunch of built-in primitives. So the quickest and easiest way to draw the red cube would be model equals cube. And you need the strings there, otherwise it will think that you're calling a cube variable. The strings tell you that it used the cube model. Now in order to actually see our cube, I'm gonna jump ahead just a little bit. So in order to actually run the application, see if we try to run it now, it will compile and it will run, but it doesn't do anything. That's because we need to actually start the application and start the, the quote-unquote game loop so that everything runs. So if we do app.run, so you know app is the same as Ursina. So we're calling Ursina and telling it to run. Now, if we execute it, we get a featureless white cube. So that's part one done. Now we need to give the cube a color. And there's a few ways to give uh, things colors in the Ursina engine, but I'm going to use the simplest way. You can use things like RGB, hex codes, I think. But the simplest way would be to color equals color dot red. And that's for making it a red cube. You can do dot green, dot brown, dot purple, maybe. That's just the simplest way to give something a color. So now if we execute this, we have a red cube. And so far, you might be thinking, oh, this is a red cube, but it's in 2D, right? This is a 2D engine? No, this is a 3D engine, and I'm about to prove that to you because the last thing we need to do is make the cube rotate. But for that, we have to define def update. Oh, open and close parentheses. So anything that happens in update is something that will happen every frame. So it's the same as in Lua 2D or something like that. Basically, if you want something to happen constantly every frame, like say if you're holding down a key, or if you want something to just constantly rotate the way we're going to do, you want it to be in update. 
And for this, we take our entity, which is red cube, and we take rotation Z. Now, this is an important little thing. For the rotation specifically, you do rotation underscore Z. For something like the X or Y value, you just do red cube dot X like this. Or red cube dot scale X. But for this, we just want the rotation. So red cube dot rotation Z. And then we're going to plus equals that, which is the same as rotation Z equals rotation Z plus whatever we're about to type. This is just way faster and a lot simpler to understand. We're just adding things to rotation Z. So I did a little experimenting before, and I thought 30 was the best. So we're going to rotate 30 every frame. And then time dot DT. Now this, this is just a way of basically telling the computer, don't tie the physics, don't tie the updates to the frame rate, because the frame rate can vary. If you do times.dt, you're using delta time instead, which ties it to the system clock, I think. Basically, it's a way of making sure that between computers, it still runs the same, even if it's running better or worse. So we have our entity, we have our color, and now we have our update with our rotations. If we execute, uh-oh, uh -oh. well, that is rotating, but that's not rotating the way I wanted it to. That's rotating on the z-axis, which was incorrect. Instead, what we want to do is rotate the rotation, maybe the rotation y is what I wanted. Ah, yes, rotation y. You can see now that it is rotating, and it is 3D. But we can make it, uh, I can make it even more obvious that it's 3D if we combine this with red cube, red cube dot rotation. Let's try x, 30 times time dot dt, and execute that. Yes, now you can very clearly see that this is actually a 3D cube. Because like I said earlier, this is a 3D engine. In fact, it's built on top of Panda 3D, which is um, basically it's a really good engine that's been used for a long time by, by many large studios. But uh, it can be a bit daunting to get into if you don't know how to use a... F I'm not going to get into it. Basically, this just makes using the Panda 3D engine a lot easier. And now we have the rotating cube. This is the first tutorial I think I've ever made, so forgive me if I'm a bit rough around the edges. I will do my best to figure out how to make things work better for the next video. Uh, thank you for watching, and ta-ra! Ta-ra? Uh, whatever, goodbye. <laughs>